All right, Shavua Tov, everyone. Good week. A good, new, fresh week <clears throat> is beginning. Just like God began the world, we're beginning also. God began the world really <clears throat> uh, from nothing, right? And we're beginning already from something. But the fact is, is everything is coming from nothing all the time, right? And God is creating everything brand new all the time. So to see not only the fact that it is, but also why it is. Why is God creating everything? All the time. So that's why we have Hasidut. That's why we have the teachings of Hasidut. To tell us, to appreciate God a little bit, to appreciate how important we are in God's eyes that he's creating us. <clears throat> and how good God is. He's creating us for free. But he does want us to pay. Our existence does not depend on that. But he wants us to be nice guys, you know, and, and to show a little appreciation. So here's how we do it. We understand the words of the Torah properly so we can live a good and a positive life, to see the good in everything. That's the idea of Hasidut. Hasidut, to see the good in everything. That's what Mashiach is going to do. See the good in everything. To pull out something good from everything. Huh? Here we go. So this week's Torah portion is called Re'eh. And it has a lot of commandments in it. A lot of commandments. There are like 50-something what commandments here in this week's Torah portion. I'll tell you exactly. Here we have a book over here. It tells you how many and exactly what they are. Parsha Re'eh. There are 30, 40, 40, 54 commandments. Huh? 54 commandments in this week's Torah portion. And, but it, this is how it starts off. Re'eh, see. God says to the Jewish people, well, this is actually Moses speaking, but everyone knows it's God speaking. I'm putting in front of you a blessing and a curse. A blessing and a curse. What's the blessing? The blessing is life. The blessing is doing what God wants. What's the curse? Is if you don't want life. You don't want to do what God wants. So you, how do you say, cut off the limb upon which you are sitting. <clears throat> but it doesn't go so fast. Let's see. Hey, look, I, so the, it's not so clear <coughs> what a person has to do. Now, God created people inside and outside. The inside of everything is good with rare, rare, very rare exceptions. There's some people who love death. Some people who love death. They used to say the SS, we were going to kill and to be killed. They, they didn't care who gets death. The main thing is, is to spread death. Huh? There's other people who love life. They love life. So you can choose. You can choose what you want. Who would possibly choose death? The reason is, is you choose death because you don't feel it's death. You feel it's alive. It's cutting yourself off from God, cutting yourself off from this, but it feels good. That's the way God made the world. Why he made the world that way, I don't know. One of the things Mashiach is going to do in the world is that people actually feel happy to do good and they'll feel miserable to do bad. Nowadays, it's almost the opposite. Unless you really think about it. I should think about it. If you think about it, then you're happy to do good. What's good? Happy, even God forbid, to sacrifice your life. Should never come to that. To do, for the right to do the right thing, it's happy. That's godliness. <clears throat> That's love. Huh? True love. Uh, the parents and their children, they're willing to do anything for their children. Parent, children for their parents. That's true. I mean, if, if it's a normal situation. <clears throat> that's true love. People that are willing to do anything for themselves, that's called how do you, the opposite of love, selfishness. Okay, ready? Let's go. I have put before you today a blessing and a curse. At the bracha, what's the blessing? It's as if you listen to what I say, etc. <clears throat> okay, now let's look at the sentence. Who's writing the sentence? This is God writing. True, Moses is saying it, but God is speaking through Moses' mouth. So every letter is exact. If one of these <coughs> letters <coughs> is, 
is missing on the Sefer Torah, then the Sefer Torah is, is disqualified until you fix it. So here it says, Ray, see, I am putting in front of you today a blessing and a curse. <clears throat> but it doesn't say, it says, I am, see, I am putting before you today. <clears throat> <clears throat> what do you mean? Only today and not tomorrow? Moses repeating, so maybe the whole Torah is not relevant. But Moses said, I'm, I'm putting in front of you today the blessing and the curse. That's today. Tomorrow we'll talk about it more. So the rabbi is exactly the opposite. At face value, that's what it is. <clears throat> <clears throat> Explain the rabbis that most things, if taken at face value, are not good. <clears throat> Hine, Omar Rizal, the rabbi say, any place where it says today, I am giving you today a blessing. Moses wasn't just speaking back then, 3,000, whatever, 300 years ago. It's any time it says, I'm giving you today, it means Nitzchi, eternal, the Olam, forever, Gamayom, also right now. Let's understand, how is God giving us, how is Moses giving us this blessing right now? Moses is not alive, huh? And, and even if we say that the tzaddikim, you know, they're always alive, but still, I mean, we don't hear them giving any blessings to us. You hear them, you see a blessing. So he says, no, here it is in the Torah. It's written in the Torah. <clears throat> there it is. When you read the Torah, you're reading what God is saying right now. <clears throat> so let's understand this. Gam, also we have to understand, what does it mean to see? I am giving before you. Lifneichem. Remember, it should say, lachem. Look, I am giving to you a blessing today, a blessing and a curse. See, I am giving to you. What does it mean before you? <clears throat> okay, so we have a couple questions. One question is, why does it say today? It says today means all the time. Also, why does it say I'm giving a blessing before you? So I'm, I'm giving to you a blessing. <clears throat> oh. There is in every Jew. Now, as I said before, just a, what do you call it? A, a disclaimer. The Rebbe is giving, is speaking here to the Jews. The Rebbe is speaking here to the Jews. Because the Jews are supposed to speak to the whole world. Like Abraham. The Jews are supposed to give over to the whole world how much God loves them. That's what you're, we're chosen for. The Jews are the chosen people. We're chosen to tell all mankind how much God loves them. He's creating them. He creates them every moment. And he gives us the biggest gift of the world, gift possible, and that is free will. And he gives us even a bigger gift than that. And that is responsibility to use that free will properly. And the Jewish people are supposed to teach the whole world these things. <clears throat> but in order to do that, the Jewish people themselves have to be aware of it. So that's the idea of the Rebbe. The Rebbe of Chabad is the Mashiach. He's, he does the job of what the Mashiach is supposed to do. True, the future redemption has not come, but this is the writing of Mashiach. Exactly this is what Mashiach is going to teach, and that's what he's teaching right now. That's what we're learning, the words of the Mashiach. Here we go. <clears throat> the main function of Mashiach is education, to educate the whole entire world what God is, to make heaven on earth. Make people stop thinking about heaven, what's going to happen after you die, to think about right now, how important you are right now that God is creating you. But the Jews have to get it first, which we see has not been going so smooth for the last 5,782, soon three years. <clears throat> but that's all going to change. <clears throat> first of all, it's all going to change because we're learning these teachings, the teachings of Chabad are designed to bring Mashiach. Hine, because if it is written, panim, but panim Hashem Remember, we learned that two weeks ago. Parshas <clears throat> Eschanan, before God gave the Torah, <clears throat> Moses was saying to the Jews, remember Jews, remember God face-to-face -face spoke to you. The Jews not only heard, they, they, they saw face-to-face -face God. What that means, we'll see. When the Jews received the Torah, that was drawn down to each and every Jew at the level of Havaya, this level of God. You know, there's a lot of names of God. 
There's a lot of names of God. Some people write me letters, <coughs> as comments, comments, and which I, enc I encourage comments, by the way. <coughs> you can even write me comments about, you know, how I'm going to burn in hell and I'm going to this, if you're willing to listen to the other side of the story, right? So send whatever comments you want, but at least be willing to receive a little bit of feedback. Okay. <clears throat> so some people send me comments and they say, ah, oh, you're talking the God of Israel is not the same God that created the world. It's a different name. That's the, this name and that name and this. Different. <clears throat> so of course, that's not so. There's only one God. And that's what the Ten Commandments say. The God created the whole world. Uh, the God gave us the Torah. God took us out of Egypt. The fourth of the Ten Commandments is God created the world in seven days. God, same God. <clears throat> But when God gave the Torah, the world is, how do you say, the outside of God. But when God gave the Torah, he gave the inside of God. Panim. So interestingly, in, in Hebrew, the word panim means two opposite things. Panim means the face, and panim means the inside. Huh? I guess it's because your insides shine through your face. Could be. <clears throat> Shalem. That in every single Jew, when they got the Torah, shall I am the call nitzutz nishmoteim, and every single Jew was given the face of God. He shined his face into the soul of every Jew. But Zeo, that's the whole idea of receiving Hadibur, the first of the Ten Commandments. Anochi Hashem Elokecha, I am God, your God. Perish. What does it mean? Shia bechin Hashem Abaya, this name of God. <clears throat> There's several names of God. And sometimes this name Yudke Vavke, this refers to the essence of God. This name of God, by the way, it's, it, it stands for Yud is constant and Hove created. God creates everything constantly. He creates the spiritual worlds. He creates the, 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 the pre-spiritual worlds, whatever. God, it's all being created by God constantly. Hove means to, you're not supposed to say this name, by the way. And those people who call themselves the whatever is Je, Je, witnesses or whatever, they're doing a big, uh, a, a, making a very big mistake. You're not supposed to say God's name, not in any form, especially this name of God. <clears throat> you can say it in other names, but in, in, uh, in like in Hebrew and in, in English or whatever, but even when you do, you're supposed to use it properly. You can't use it in the discouraging way. For sure, you can't use it to refer to some sort of idolatry. <clears throat> Christianity is idolatry. And not nice to say it. I mean, the people that, that, that do it are, are genuine people and sincere people, and they've been fooled. They've been fooled. Billions, two and a half billions of people have been fooled for well, almost 2,000 years. But okay, this is sort of to get us, hopefully, Mashiach is going to, says, we'll knock down. People will just leave all the religions. They'll realize it's obsolete. They're all obsolete. I mean, maybe they needed it. <clears throat> to give them some sort of a connection to morals. Okay, ready? Here we go. So it says, when God gave the Torah, he revealed his insight to every single Jew. Mir, Mizkala, Becha, and each and every Jew, call Kach, so much, Achi, and Nikra, I'm sorry. Kabbalah said, that's right. <clears throat> Every single Jew received the Anuchi, the essence of God, so much. It's called on your name. What do you mean on your name? Elokecha. You say Elokeinu, our God, your God. Right, what's the first three words of the, of the, of the, of the Torah, the Ten Commandments? I... Am God your God? Anochi Hashem Elokecha your God. Elokim Shelcha your God. Kamo Shkatuv in other places. Shine inside of every Jew, and every Jew now has this <clears throat> God, the Torah, engraved in the essence of his soul. It's there. You can ignore it. You can not be aware of it. You can look in a different direction. You can be fooled. <clears throat> you can be diverted. You can be whatever is perverted. You can all these things. But the, there it is. It's never going to go away. Let's explain this. Beering, and let's explain this. Eich <clears throat> yeish, how it is. Bechin Hashem Abaya. And how can it be that God's name is inside of every single Jew? How can it be? Every Jew, another, there's another way of saying it. Every Jew is the son of God. 
<clears throat> every Jew is the son of God. When Moses went into Paro to take out the Jews, God said to him, go into Paro and say, my son, my chosen one, Israel. Bani b'chor Israel. In this week's Torah portion also, it says, very strange, it says, right? Well, I was to say, Bani matem l'ashem elkecha. You are God. You are sons of God, your God. Lot is go to do. It says, don't, don't uh, curve yourself. Don't. <coughs> anyway, it says the Jews people are the sons. Of, it explains it in the second chapter of the Tanya. Ine, Omer is all the rabbis say that how is it that every single Jew has the essence of God inside of him? That's what makes us sons of God. Ine, Omer is all the rabbis say. A few of Rishoyim, even evil Jews. There are such things. <clears throat> I've heard. I heard. There's a, Rishoyim, Malayim, Haratos, even the, how do you say, the biggest sinners of the Jews are filled with regret. There falls to them, thoughts of repentance. Mahmas, because they don't want to be separated from God. This makes no sense. It's without any reason but that. Because this level of reality that's inside of every Jew, that every Jew feels that God really does exist, that God really is creating us, and God really does want us to do his Torah. Inside of every Jew, this is what's called the level of Chachma, the highest of the ten spherot. What's called Chachma in the soul of every Jew, loosely translated as wisdom. Or sometimes in the Tanya translates it as faith. <clears throat> Chachma means on a, a level of awareness that's above understanding, beyond understanding. When it translates into a human personality, it means bitl, surrender to God. <clears throat> now, here you have to remember we're talking about God, right? So God is creating us. <clears throat> Nobody feels that. You feel God is creating you? Feel it? I don't know. Big tzaddikim do feel it. Tzaddik is a person who feels it. God is creating also for a reason. You feel that? I believe it. I feel it. Tzaddikim feel it. <clears throat> feel it. The same power that's creating me, that's creating the world, is the same God that gave the Torah. And it's giving the Torah. So carved inside of every single Jew is a feeling, I must do what it says in the Torah. Why? I don't know. I have no idea. Right? I know stories, I know stories personally. People that wanted to get married to non-Jewish women, and all of a sudden, at the last second, they said, what am I doing? They had everything to gain by marrying this one, nothing, and by divorcing her, everything to lose. They just said, I can't marry a non-Jewish woman. Can't do it. <clears throat> right? There's, there's, there are parents that, that they didn't do any Torah, no commandments whatsoever, and they circumcised their children. Right. Israelis are a little bit different. Israelis have been ingrained with a powerful anti-God thing, but also with them. Everybody's going to wake up, <clears throat> even the Israelis. That, why? Because there's a level of Chachman. This is the inside carved out into the essence of the soul of every single Jew, total surrender to God, which is above any understanding, the dot or logic, which can be understood. But Nikra, this is called maskil. <clears throat> this level is called maskil. Seichel is intelligence. Maskil <clears throat> is the source of soul. It gives intelligence. The source of consciousness, you want to call it. <clears throat> in the Jew, the source of consciousness is carved in <clears throat> the Torah. That the Torah and God are one. <clears throat> maskil al dober Because it says, maskil eitan ezrachi. It's one of the Psalms. Maskil <clears throat> Maskil means like a song, a poem to this person called Eitan Ezrahi. But if you look a little deeper, Maskil, this is this level of the essence of the soul we're talking about. Le Eitan, Eitan means powerful. Ezrahi means to shine. Let's see. <clears throat> Maskil means that this level of Maskil, the essence of the soul, Liot Eitan, to be strong. Eitan Chizuk, Kamo Eitan, Moshe Vecha, your dwelling will be powerful. <laughs> This level is it's very strong. That is strong in every single Jew. Oh, very much. What's called stiff-necked people. 
the Jews are stiff-necked people for good and for not so good. Like it says, like it says, the Jewish people, they're a stiff-necked people, therefore God said, I will forgive them. Uh, that's not a reason to forgive them. A stiff-necked people is a reason to punish them. But here we're talking about their stiff neck for good. A Jew that reveals, realizes, connects to, becomes aware of the essence of his soul, he cannot go against it. Like a person can't kill his own father. A normal person. A normal person cannot kill his father and mother. A normal human being. Right? A normal father cannot kill his son. Parents can't do it. In fact, it says that, that it's less probable that parents will kill their children than the children kill their parents. <coughs> children kill their parents. In some ways, I mean, uh, uh, Nazi Germany was better than, than America today. Right. In Nazi Germany, they didn't like to do uh, abortions. They wanted as many children as possible. True, they wanted the children to grow up to become murderers and more. But nevertheless, they didn't want to kill the... But to kill their parents was no problem. Old people, they got sick, right? Parents got sick. They got a little bit useless. Father well, limped a little bit. He couldn't this. They used to put... Really, they used to kill him. And old people, they would kill him. It was, it was a good for the society. It was good for this. It was just a burden and this. is Right? Usually speaking, <clears throat> a father cannot kill his son. And they didn't kill their children. But a son can kill a father. They did that. They killed their fathers. In America now, the parents are killing their children. Incredible. Okay. And I, hopefully we've reached the bottom. Hopefully reach. Okay. Ki'am kashe orafu, you are a stiff-necked people, therefore God forgives us. Right? What does it mean to stiff neck people? They cannot, once a person realizes that God is God is his father's creator, <clears throat> he can't go against what it says in the Torah. <clears throat> he can't do it. Right? But that's only when he realizes the essence of his soul. Like it says, and oh, I used to say, well, that's only the rabbis. But the rabbis are people that they realize this level of Eitan in their souls. These were genuine people that genuinely feared God, and they genuinely wanted to find the genuine meaning of the Torah. And those people, that's why we learn the Talmud. That's what all these yeshivas are for, to learn the Talmud, and to connect ourselves with these genuine, <clears throat> holy, truthful people called the, the rabbis of the Talmud. <clears throat> Once we realize this, that these people... They had these people, they had the kashe or if they had the stiff neck, they were willing to serve God no matter what. <clears throat> like it says in another place, the gam otot eitan, that's eitan. <clears throat> that's the power of the Jewish soul. Misham shot la'ati, this is also talking about the future. Eitan, I will give. Ki la'ati labo, because also in the future, God will give this eitan, this, he will give this tremendous power. Bechin is bitol anal, these galos bakalecha becha that will be revealed in every single Jew. Every Jew will. And from there, the whole world will say, God must really exist. If these Jewish people are so devoted, it must be that they really have something. They're really. Masha Enkin, which is not called now, Haruach Shtuz, nowadays what? There's what's called a, a spirit of insanity. Mechaseh covers over the world. The dome be enough, and people think that a person could do sins, and he still is a good Jew. Huh? Still is a good Jew. That's basically Zionism, reform, conservative. You don't have to do what it says in the Torah. You don't have to do what God wants. I'm a Jew. So we see on one hand that they're fooling themselves, but on the other hand, we see that Judaism is very, very important to them. <clears throat> They will not relinquish for one moment the fact that they're a Jew. I mean, the, the fact is they would relinquish. If somebody asked them, are you Jewish? They'll say, no, I'm not. But deep down in their souls, they won't. Right? You say, you're a, you're a, you're a, how do you say, a bad Jew. They'll say, what are you talking about? Uh, you, you religious people, you're better. Look what you do. You're, you're a bunch of thieves. But they get all angry. The person says, yeah, you're right. I'm a bad Jew. So what? Right? Big deal. <clears throat> 
you know, go go to an atheist and say, you're a bad Muslim, you're a bad Christian, you're a bad Buddhist, you're a bad so I don't care, bro. I care. Right? Once he leaves the religion, I don't care. I say, I'm a bad Muslim. Okay. You go to a Jew that does absolutely nothing in Judaism, nothing whatsoever. He's against the whole thing. You say you're a bad Jew. He said, You drop dead. I'm a bad Jew. You're a bad. It's important that the reform Jew, Jew, he has to be, it's important to them. That's this inside soul of the Jew. It's inside. When it becomes revealed, then <clears throat> that stubbornness is revealed in every aspect of the Torah, as we ask to the soul. All right. Okay, we'll see. I'm not any doubt. Of course, what you're talking about, immediate, that's right. Immediate. Immediately. Immediately. This thing about Mashiach coming immediately, it's, it's a double-edged sword, you understand? The Rebbe said it's supposed to be. On one hand, and the Rebbe said it clearly, it makes you crazy. The Rebbe said you have to be crushed. It makes you crazy. As soon as you start thinking, Mashiach has to come every minute, why doesn't it come? I have to do something. I must be done. I got to do something more. I have to do a little bit more. It makes you crazy. That's called shtus to kedusha, hopefully. On the other hand, you have to be very happy. Look, I'm doing what I can. It's not going to work unless you're... <laughs> So you got to do them both. Okay, which is possible. The way you do it, the, how do you be happy? Just forget about everything. Forget about everything. Just be happy. Stand up, dance a little bit, sing a little bit. Don't care about anybody who says you're crazy, whatever it is. As understood, you know, I mean, the, the, don't take off your clothes or anything like that. But <clears throat> there's a, a, how do you say, a method to your madness you have to have. That's what that says, Ezrahi. Ezrahi, that's what Eitan Ezrahi. That's what it means, Ezrahi. This is the essence of the soul. Eitan Ezrahi Melashan Ezrah. Or it's a, a permanent dweller, a what do you call it? a citizen. Sheyish that each and every Jew has inside of him. God is dwelling in a permanent way, is a citizen inside of each and every one Jewish soul. Forever. Eitan also means old, ancient. He Israel because the Jewish people, all of them, except the Jewish people, rose up in God's thought before He created the world. The makor of the kula, the source of everything. This level is bechinas yud. This is the level of the yud of God's name. It's in our soul. Huh? <coughs> one minute. One minute. Bechinas oh. hey. That's the level yud. Level hey. The God's God's name is four letters. Four letters, Yud, and then Hey, and then Bob, and then Hey. The Yud, that's the essence, this little point of Judaism, the point of connection to the essence of God, to the connection of a Jew to reality, that it's absolutely no problem for a Jew to even give his life for God. Not that he intentionally wants to give his life. He just can't do otherwise. It's just impossible for a Jew to go against God. It's impossible. He can't do it. <clears throat> But like the Rebbe says, nowadays there's a spirit of insanity covering over the world. Huh? <clears throat> and soon it's going to go. Listen, I mean, I, I think personally, this is the biggest signs Mashiach is coming. What's going on like in America and in this, this woke stuff and this cha gender changing and stuff. I don't think there's in the history of the world ever in the world, in Sodom Amora, in the most decadent, crazy, twisted places, there's never been such a thing like this. Never been such a thing like this. And all the intellectuals, they go for it. You have Greece, right? There was homosexuality and all this stuff. But there were people that's the intellectuals that stood up and they said, no, that this is, let's do a different way. Let's do, there's other, here they've got these big, the big college professors. There was some lady that stood up and she said, here I have, <clears throat> that the, the, the gender change is uh, this. I have the biggest uh, the professors. They all say it's from, okay. So I think we've gotten down to the, the, what we can see, what it means, what insanity can, mass insanity can do to people. Well, the Jews have been suffering for this mass insanity for the last at least 2,000 years. That's what got the temple destroyed. It's not in such a, 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 how do you say, a blatantly crazy way, but in a way, in the time of the temple, it was more blatant and more crazy. If you think about it for one instant, a normal, regular Jew, Normal, regular, healthy Jew, right? Normal Jew, he does all the commandments. He does keep Shabbos, he's, he's, he fears God, he loves God, he loves every other Jew, he loves every human being. 
He only wants to do good, does all the commandments to fill in and, 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 and mezuzah and tzitzis and he prays everything. He does everything. That's a normal, regular Jew. Regular Jew, right? In the time of the temple, they had the temple. Everybody knew this. In the time of the temple, one, at least one half, I think, 10 of the tribes never went down to the temple. The first temple. They stayed up, up, up north. People, the Jews worshipped idols. Jews loved worship idols. They were doing all sorts of crazy things. And the prophets were coming along, Isaiah, and saying, stop it, guys, stop it. What are you doing? Right? And they said, who is this guy? What is he talking about? I'm just saying, what are they, you're worshiping the golden calf. It says in the Torah, you're not supposed to do that. And finally, it ended up that we talked about it before. Isaiah's grandson killed him. Menashe, his own grandson was a terrible idolater and murderer, and God forgave Menashe. God actually forgave him. <laughs> the thing makes no sense. He forgave him. He was the longest king of all in Israel. He gave him 25 more years. <laughs> Murdered his grandfather. God forgave him. Anyway, don't try it at home. Ubechin is, hey, okay, that's the letter Yud. The letter Yud, and that's the inner connection plug that connects every single Jew to the essence of God. What's the letter hey? The letter hey, it, it's there. We don't see it because of the craziness that's ever okay. The letter hey, he begins bina. This is what's called bina, understanding. This is Rahovo Tanahar, the widening out of the river. <clears throat> yud, the letter Yud of God's name, that's like the point of the how did the, the, the wellspring comes out, how it comes out and widens out. That's the widening of the river. How does that translate to us? Yud is this inner connection, which is totally incomprehensible that every Jew has to God. Hey is how it manifests itself, articulates itself, widens itself, becomes a little bit applicable, <coughs> a systematic, huh? understandable. Sheyeshlo orach varoch, that's the letter hey. Hainu inyan is bonus. This means contemplation. You contemplate, you start thinking, making it personal. Contemplating the godless of greatness of God, call Khadlafum Shiri delay, each one according to his ability. Ehu, how it is, what are you supposed to think? Here you go. I'll tell you what to think. Get ready. How it is that God in the heavens above and on the earth below, ain't oh, there's nothing except for God. Huh? Number one. Number two, the Kula command, everything in front of God, Kalo, it's like nothing. <clears throat> When you start to think about what this, what okay, God is one, God exists, God exists. So what what are the implications? What does it mean? Right? It means everybody just do what they, do what you want. He says no. Start thinking about it. You'll start to realize that God's presence is also found in every detail of the world. <clears throat> just like human anatomy is very complex, God's anatomy is also complex, and we're made in God's image. These two levels, this is called yud, which is the inner connection above understanding, and the hey, which is understanding. These two levels, tzurichim lios tamid, they always have to be by a person serving God. Believe pirud, because the upper level, that's what gives you the excitement and the how do you say the 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 <clears throat> the, the fire. And the lower level is that's the yud, and the hey that spreads it out and makes it practical. <clears throat> user friendly to understand God. Good God is one. What does He want me to do? Kalpes bechinasila on these two levels. It says in the Zohar, she ain't train rain. These are two friends, the lomish parshan that can never be separated. Lochi and therefore tzurich liyod gam do adam kach. A person has to have the same thing. What you understand about God has to make you excited. Hainu lit bonen. A person should think. And to deepen your mind and your understanding, but orach v'rochev in length and in depth, with <clears throat> trying to understand the source of all these ideas of God's oneness, how God creates the angels, these upper worlds, and also how this applies to me. Kefiyah sher yad sechlo, according to what a person understands. Will the people of love and to be surrendered totally to God and the dove kabon to cling to God, but mysterious nefesh. With self-sacrifice, mamish. The begin is chachman, a way of chachma, which is above understanding. So God is completely one. He wants me to surrender to him. Does that mean I can get a job? Can I work? Of course you can. God wants you to be in the world. That's the whole Torah. The whole Torah is understanding. Uh, so I'll just get into understanding and, you know, that's it. No, you have to be excited about God. You have to be fire on fire. 
Your business, everything you do in your business has to be devoted totally to the creator of the universe. Right? If so, it's going to be a pretty dismal business, right? You're not going to paint the place. No, God wants you to paint it also. God wants you, the business to look nice. You have to have, you have to have, how do you say, uh, the merchandise and you have to be a good salesman. You have to provide to this. <coughs> in fact, you have to be better than everybody else. You're representing the creator of the universe in the world. But you have to have the inspiration and also the application. Huh? I'll, I'll, what do you say about that? The inspiration application. She'im lo, yelo, if you don't have these two levels of bittel, if you don't have this upper level of inspiration connecting to God, as I then, a filu is born, and even if you think about the greatness of God all the time, and and according to, and you give birth to love and fear, but it won't last because you're not really connected to something above you. It all depends on your mind. Key because chachma baleh, because it says that this level of chachma. This enlivens those who have it. You have to realize that when you learn the Torah, for instance, and the Torah is pure intellect, thinking, learning, understanding, deepening ideas, different facets of the Torah, different opinions on the Torah. You have to understand them, how they all work together, right? You're using your mind all the time. Your heart has to be inflamed. Your heart either actually, potentially, you're, you're learning God's Torah, it's not yours. And that makes a person very humble and it makes a person very happy. <coughs> because Chachma in life, that's what it says, Kibal, Baal, Mara, the reborn. It says, but the Chachma, wisdom, Techia, enlivens Baal, those who possess it. What does it mean, possess it? <coughs> it means that those who own it, Afilu Ma. Even what you rule over, you understand the Torah, the whole Torah is, is, is you got it. And you can think about the greatness of God. You can explain any idea in Kabbalah. Truthfully, we're not talking about the Kabbalah center or whatever it is. It is. It, the more you understand about godliness, this gives a form to your inspiration. <clears throat> so having both of them together, but the, having the form to the inspiration, that makes you, so to speak, the possessor of it. <laughs> There's no thought that can grasp in God at all. aura <laughs> calls you just a little bit from this God's wisdom. But when you think about God, it's bonanut. Hari, Machshava, Tafisa, then all of a sudden you can start to understand certain ideas about God. Then, then that enlivens these ideas. <clears throat> a person sometimes can get very enthusiastic about God, but if he doesn't have the proper framework within it, it can lead him to idolatry. It says that there has to be that. that and the, the new, let's take an example. Building a house, right? You want to build a house. You want to build a castle. You build a huge castle, a castle, beautiful, beautiful castle. What's the main thing of the castle? The person who lives in it. The person who lives in it is the main thing. But the person living in it without the castle is not very impressive. A king without a castle, eh, wandering around in the fields, I'm your, I'm your king, bow down to me. What are you talking about? Right, who, why? Look, I've got royal clothes. Okay, that's a little bit convincing. That's a good point. But the king inside of his palace, the same thing as the whole world. Understanding God, God is the king. But we have to make God a palace. The palace is your understanding. The palace is how you can <clears throat> utilize this enthusiasm that you get from connecting to God. The nakuda, this point that you connect to God and God is infinite and God is creating me. This mechaya, this enlivens the palace. She'im ain't nakuda, because if there's no point, ain't eichal, meshamash klum. Then you've got a big palace and it's very beautiful, and there's nothing inside of it, right? They they they, they transform it into a, a mental institution or something. <coughs> <coughs> Nobody's using this place. Oh, it's a perfect place that they make a movie theater. But as soon as the boss comes in, the, the king, then oh, then the palace is meaningful. But on the other hand, the other way around, if you just have a king without a palace, so the king is wandering around, nobody listens to him. He's got no... Even if you have this, if you haven't got the heichal, if you haven't got the understanding 
of what the implications, what does it mean that I'm unified with God? What does it mean that God exists? What does it mean that God gave the Torah? If you haven't got the, the, the understanding, then ain't no clue. Then you haven't got anything. <clears throat> Therefore, you have to have both of them. Ke'echad, at one. Behem, train, rain. These are like true friends. The loan is partial. Lamata, kamo lamayla, below, kamo above. Okay, that's what the, and what have we learned over here? We've learned about what the essence of a Jew is, what it means, see that I am giving to you today. How can you feel today, right now, the oneness of God? A little bit we've talked about that. Jewish people have to activate their Judaism. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's leave the bad things up to Hashem. I, I don't, sort of don't like talking about these bad things that are in the world because they're so obvious, but sometimes the, the um, how do you say, I'm not so okay myself. <laughs> so these things sort of have a, 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 a connection to me, but, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> we see in the Rebbe's speeches, for instance, the Rebbe spoke 99.9% good. And once in a while, he would say something bad, and it was never about people. It was always about ideas and mistakes that are being made by the Israeli government, by the this, that. <clears throat> Generally speaking, the few, very, very few times that the Rebbe did say, you know, bad things, they were very, very powerful. I mean, this is a lesson for, okay. <clears throat> Nevertheless, what think you're saying about the bad, <clears throat> that there's a saying that say that the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe did not like did not like people, did not like it when, I say, didn't like the people that talked in the middle of prayer. And more, he did not like the people who told them to keep quiet. Because the people that are talking, okay, so they're talking, they're doing bad. But the people that are complaining about them and telling them to keep quiet, they really get a big pleasure out of it. Uh, right? They get all excited about the bad. You are speaking and you are yelling and this. <clears throat> it's the same thing. There's a lot of bad in the world, and it's very easy to get excited about it. And forget about our point. We're in the world to make good. We're supposed to be here to make good. And this applies to every situation. You're in a situation that makes you angry. So in that situation, don't get angry. Do something good. You have, you're have you justified a million percent to be angry. Right? <clears throat> but if you don't get angry, that's a whole different world. A whole different world. Okay, maybe I'll tell you a small story. <laughs> I'll add on the story to this. <clears throat> I, I, I go every Friday. There's a big, huge marketplace in the middle of Tel Aviv. There, <clears throat> it's like a little art, artsy, craftsy place. People sell all sorts of stuff, and there's street musicians and everything. And I set up a table over there, and I put the fill in on people, and I give out candles, you know, anyway, to ladies. Anyway, on the way back, so we finished. So on the way back, <clears throat> there's two, the, the, I see there's one guy is driving. It's very hard to find parking places in Tel Aviv. Just happened this just now. <clears throat> hard to find parking places. Anyway, so a, a guy is driving on the street. He's got a nice car. <clears throat> and um, all of a sudden, he sees a parking place over to the left. And he stops. The person behind him also stops. right? But he doesn't exactly understand why the guy in front of him is stopped. Is he stopped? Just to let somebody off, or is he stopped, you know, to, 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 and I don't know if he even saw this parking place, the guy that was behind him. Anyway, the guy in front, the guy in front, without waiting for the person behind him to move back, put his car in reverse and gunned it, <laughs> smacked right into, he turned the wheel and he smacked right into this guy who was behind him. Now, the person behind him, he had a nice new car, a nice blue car, whatever it was, a Honda or something like that. Smacked right into him, boom. In Israel, you know, everybody's hot-headed. So the guy in the front guy, that he was totally at fault. He got out. And I was standing there right next to him. I saw the whole thing. He got out and he started yelling at the guy that was behind him. What are you doing? You're doing? The guy who was behind him, now he's got two reasons to get mad. First of all, the guy smacked into his car. And second of all, somebody yells at you, you yell back, right? That's the, that's the animal instinct inside of us. Someone yells at you, yeah, you yell back at the person. So he gets out and he starts yelling at this guy back. What are you talking about? You're yelling at that guy and the first guy's yelling. So I yelled at the first guy and I said to him in Hebrew, what are you screaming about? You fool, you smacked into his car. 
I said, Nichnas to Bobo Kola told you, he knocked into his car. What are you screaming about? So he looks at me. I'm a religious guy, you know, sort of a rabbi. <clears throat> and so he, I guess he had a little respect instead of saying, you know, what are you talking about? So he looks over and the guy behind him says, yeah, you smacked in the mirror. I said, but I saw it's a miracle. I said, look, and what happened was, is he went in, it must have been made of, made of fiberglass or something because he knocked into it. And as soon as he knocked into it, he went forward and it popped back out. <laughs> the place where he knocked into, I mean, it was a big indentation. You know, it was like, I don't know, a half a foot. It was a big, it just popped back out. <clears throat> and it was, you could see that there was no scratches or anything. So he said, uh, oh yeah. I said, yeah, you were at fault, but look, there was a miracle. So the first guy runs and he says, yeah, but maybe you made a, a scratch or something. He said, it was a miracle. I didn't make <laughs> Anyway, so they both calmed down. I said, listen, there's people behind you. Pull over to the side and make friends, talk about it, but don't block up the whole place. So they both, finally, when I got my car and I came over, they were talking over them, laughing at the side and talking. It shows that in situations that you get that are, that are which normally make you angry, if you don't get angry, it changes the whole world. And we have the ability to do that. Let's go. Now we're going to learn the Dvar Malchut. <clears throat> 